The International Olympic Committee has the honor of announcing that the Games of the 30th Olympiad in 2012 are awarded to the city of London. London's Olympic team strikes gold. opportunity that came across to me in this meeting was that um, whilst we're looking to have a, an Olympic presence in London for the reading room, um, when, when the, the events have been and gone, there will be the opportunity to have a reading room presence long into the future. And it, it is a world opportunity, a worldwide opportunity. We can't pass this up. <laughs> It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to really rally round and support in prayer and support through love the whole world coming to your doorstep. Yesterday we launched our first website which is spirituality2012.com. So it's gaining some momentum and as I said the response to date has been very enthusiastic. About half the UK <coughs> churches and societies have responded and donated or promised money. That's about 50 I think, we think about 50. It's getting on for 60 now. Oh it's getting on for 60 now yeah. out of about 110 churches. I'm going to start praying more for sport, everything it represents, and going higher in my sense of that as part of this preparation. It was a very inspiring meeting. First of all, the Olympic ideals align so perfectly with our own ideals in Christian science. And then secondly, how you are putting the, the two sets of ideals together in this project. So I found it very reassuring, very inspiring. I want to take part. We can look back and say, well, everything we talked about, all those ideas that we thought weren't possible, have happened, and a lot more. And I'm just absolutely amazed and so gratified by the support we've had from everybody, from not just the UK movement, but from abroad as well. Yeah, it's, yeah it was absolutely brilliant, really interesting. Um, amazing to see the, the regeneration of the whole you know, the whole area, even before the Olympic project started, um, and hopefully going to carry on long after the Olympics. Um, I think the reading room will be as much about going out as it will be about attracting people in. We have been accepted by the Publishing Society or by the Mother Church for Journal listing and our listing will be in the, from the August journal. The Olympics is such a big global project that I mean it, it's, it's with so many people involved it feels like Christian science just needs to be there to just give it that uplift. Well this is a major international event people are going to be coming to London from all around the world and Christian science has something to offer not just for athletes and people interested in sports but for anyone who cares about the world, who wants a deeper understanding of what spirituality is and how it relates to their lives. We were talking about it in the church and thinking, you know, the Olympics, it's a marvellous opportunity. I wonder if we're going to do anything. And then we got your letter and it said, are we going to be there? And we all said, yeah, we better be there. It's an idea whose time really has come. Everything fell into place 
that even though through our search for a property to rent, we looked at other places and we really, I feel, were guided to end up here. It's proved to be the right size, it's proved to be easily manageable and it's all fallen beautifully into place. It's a beautiful, bright reading room, not too big, welcoming and just being part of seeing the warmth and energy in this part of Stratford and, and taking part in the whole thing. That's really what has come across to me, is being part of this community. It broadened um, my horizons on, uh, sort of opened me up to a different way of looking at the Olympics. Um, I was, you know, kind of very, you get very fixated on, well, it's like, you know, it's all about winning the medals and all the papers about how many medals we've got and runners up and bronze, silver, gold. And, and actually, um, just the achievement of being here and, um, and being in competition you know, with your own limits, to break your own limits, um, is a very different way of looking at it for me, and I found that very interesting. Well, I had the great privilege of working at the Olympics. I was based in the Olympic Village with the athletes for five weeks. And to have the reading room here, knowing that it was supporting this wonderful activity, was you could just feel it. It was palpable. The, the feeling of safety, the feeling of joy, the feeling of excitement. And the athletes were so calm and peaceful. And I just know that the reading room being here, just a, literally a stone's throw from where the athletes were living, made such a difference. This is the first time I've come to the Olympic reading room since it's been opened uh, and thank goodness I came today because I see what a vibrant place it is and colourful and inspiring too. I think it's great to be in this small space. I think it's a good learning process for me as a lecturer. I haven't done very much of that. I've mostly been in more bigger venues. Um, and it's, it's very useful because it allows us to focus on the ideas that we're sharing very, very strongly because there are distractions, there are noises. And it, I felt today that the audience were also focusing on those ideas. So right in the centre of that, it's very important. We're not hid away, we're right here where everybody's coming and going. It's fun that the open door here, that people can come by and listen for a couple of minutes and then walk on again, as well as those that came inside and sat for the whole lecture or the whole talk. I think it's a great venue and it's wonderful what's been going on here. What I love about the reading room is it's actually bringing a spiritual dynamic to it and showing that it's not just the athletes who are here to achieve and to be at their personal best and to give their best performances, but all of us in every area of our life has an opportunity to really find spiritual resources to bring out the best in our lives, to really let us live the love of God courageously and effectively. It maybe the most important thing about these is that it brings communities together. So starting with the Olympic spirit of, of bringing nations together, uh, the reading room and church sponsored activities for this Olympics of bringing all, first of all, all the churches in England together, sponsoring an activity, and then crossing into, just looking around the setting now, um, uh, people on the floor speaking with one another casually about this. Um, uh, it is that bridge that, that, that brings everything everyone together and, and so uh, uh, the importance of getting outside of our you know, limited church perspective or our church buildings and out into the broader community is, is uh, it changes the message entirely and you think about this is how the message was shared originally. I think you know it's so important that we are out of the box you see because here are so many seekers thousands <laughs> You see, and you know, we have so many wonderful conversations here with newcomers and more than I think over a year in a normal reading room often. So I think it's so important that we are on these events, you see, that we give another perspective for them, you see, that they can find really spirituality and 
hear a lot of seekers and newcomers. I, I used to tell myself, really, there are only two options in life, to sink or to swim. And it doesn't do any good to say, gosh, I'm having to swim so hard and I'm getting so tired, maybe I should sink. I'm not gonna think that, and I don't think anybody else would want to think that either. So what does it take to swim better? What does it take to understand better who I really am? And if you start thinking from what God has done, then that thought doesn't push you so much. But if you, if you put God in the center and realize, yeah, but what did he cause in the first place, um, then, then you're, willing to, you're willing to work until you understand that. And I, the success isn't, uh, it's based on law. It's not based on, am I a good boy? Or, am, you know, have I uh, done whatever? It's based on what has God done. We invited 24 practitioners around the world to support the Olympics and the Paralympics for one hour each a day, linking up so that the 24 hour coverage was available at the most convenient time in their own time zones. And we have been in touch with all of them and have had wonderful feedback from them. The effect of their support has been tangible. Well, we wanted to get involved and the thought of a, a lecture in our reading room was a wow, we've never thought of that before. I think it was the fact that you were having them in the Olympic reading room that gave us the idea. It has been a most extraordinary experience because the tangible f effect of the 24 practitioners we have had supporting us has been felt it's been perceptible and more for the wider movement of the Olympics for the country and especially for the concept of world peace. It's meant that the Christian Science activity in Stratford has had a worldwide effect. Um, and so I think to be able to support a talk um, which is talking about that spiritual aspect of competition I think is so important in the Olympic city. So we gave out leaflets, uh, we went round the shops, we communicated with the shops. It was absolutely wonderful the warmth we got when we talked about co cooperation, being working together uh, for a sense of progress for our community and how we could liaise doing that for talking about uh, spiritual progress and how our business is developed from within us. And uh, without exception, we got interest. People were open, friendly, and I think they saw a new view of the reading room. It's pulled in not only um, Christian scientists to, to realize, oh well, okay, we've got something to share and here's a perfect venue to do it, but it's also been so wonderful for the public. The, the lecture itself was so so wonderful. It was really made for, for the purpose of what as well. It was quite clear, very practical. It was all about the kind of competition, the the um, the way how we achieve things together, the, the Olympic spirit without keeping somebody else down, without fighting each other, but do something together and then achieve something together. So I really enjoyed it. Also to me it's been a remarkable way, and I saw this especially last night, for people to come in literally off the street and say, what's going on here? It was just, um, you know, what, what is this? What is this? And asking questions. And I think that's, that's what we need to be embracing. We need to realize that's, that's, our, that's our place. Our place is here in the, in the hearts of the people. The understanding is there. It's just you know, our joy. I think it's our joy to be here and to be, you know, cherishing it and expressing it in others as well. It's wonderful. Well, I've been amazed. First of all, I've been amazed at the dedication of the committee and what a wonderful committee it's been to work with because everyone, although they worked independently, have all contributed in such a wonderful way in their different ways to the complete whole, you know. Shall we just join together for a few moments 
uh, in silent prayer and then we'll say aloud together the daily prayer. When you have dedicated people around, you don't have to push them. They spring into action the moment the idea comes up. And that's been a lovely thing to witness. You know, when you're speaking to somebody and you see a slight moistening in the eye, and you start to feel this really is a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. I mean, some were five seconds. I had one that was about 45 minutes, and the guy just would not go until he could find out so perfectly in his own mind what it was I believed and why I was there. And I just go home every time saying, wow, you know, I wouldn't have missed this for the world. I am absolutely in awe of it. It's amazing, it's like we're in a way, um, the captain of a ship with all the team around me steering the ship and I'm just telling everyone where we're going. We, we've had a terrific amount of local people come in. We've sold I don't know how many um, Portuguese sides and healths. As of today, 70. 70 Ooh. sides and healths. 17 have been, 17 foreign ones and the rest, yeah, yeah and 70. Yeah, that's, good. that's, good. that's terrific, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, we reckon it was an average about two a day, right. um, which we thought was quite good. Later on, someone came in, uh, he was suffering from his wife being unfaithful, and he was with me for an hour or more. Um, and we just have that all the time, people coming in needing help. Something told him, book. The word book kept coming to his thought. Mm -hmm. So he says, OK, I think there's a bookshop around here. Should I go to work? No, OK, I'm going to follow up this idea book. One of the volunteers, Maggie, she says, well, have you read this book, Science and Health? And he goes, ah, book, thank you. And he goes, right, I'm buying that book. He knew nothing about the book, but something had said to him, book. Um, and you know, the conversation went on for probably about another hour. Um, I, won't, I won't go into all the details, but it's just moments like that that really affirm in my head that we are so needed there. I feel that it's been a marvellous thing to have done and um, to be doing and that it, I'm sure we've helped a lot of people and we've sown seed and um, hopefully into really good ground because that parable of the, the sower is actually the parable of the soils. It's the, it's the same seed goes into all the different ground but the good ground brings forth and multiplies and I'm sure we've been sowing it into some pretty good ground. But interestingly enough, so many people are asking, what is this science? And actually connecting science and Christianity and to actually share these laws with people and that they're not fallible human laws, but they're infallible divine laws that cannot ever be changed. People are just like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. The response of the public, of course, it goes without saying, it has been amazing. And what it's done for me is heal me of a certain reticence in communication. You know, it's brought me out of myself and made it so important to speak to the heart, the hearts of the people that I've spoken to. And there's been such a wonderful response, such gratitude and joy and pleasure and delight to hear the spiritual ideas which we have for this wonderful resource and fund. Uh, I don't think we're aware of what we have, but our job certainly is to share it. And this reading room has been an exercise in true communication. Um, yeah, I think it's wonderful what's happened. It, it, it does take you out of your comfort zone when you kind of step out there and you get onto the pop-up stand and you start handing out thoughts for the day and um, you know and actually have to talk to people and it, and it makes you sort of clarify your own thought as well um, so for me personally it's, it's you know um, it's been very helpful and a lot of people um, especially myself uh, the feeling of kind of going out there and going even just would you like believe that? Yeah. You know, that feeling of it is but it's that's really pushing the boundaries you know for me especially um, but but it's been really kind of a you know, kind of growing, growing thing to do. You just, you know, you kind of get on and do it, and um, and it's a way of finding, finding a way of doing that without being pushy, but you know, really gently, kind of, um, kind of inviting people really, um, and people do respond to it. Yeah, it is. It's all about love.
Yeah. And uh, for me, it's a, been a massive sort of growing experience because that's com it's just completely out of the sort of natural environment I'm in, I suppose. So, yeah. <laughs> The response you get from people who are interested is actually wonderful and they genuinely are interested. You get lots of people that you know, walk by and their heads are down like this. But if you catch somebody's eye and you start and share, things like the, the thoughts for the day, and you start and share that, they're actually genuinely interested. I've had some lovely conversations with people um, and enjoyed it enormously. I think there have been a lot of lessons learned here. Um, and I think the main one is get out of the box, get out of our comfort zone, um, look at activities that can stimulate interest. Thank you. That are hooks um, for people to focus on. Because it's one thing to wander into a reading room, but it's another to say actually there's a talk going on. I've got 20 minutes, half an hour free, I'm going to go and listen. No thanks, I've got no, two No, they're really good. Yeah, all they're, they're all about it. Oh, seriously? Yeah. From the Bible, good books. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. Where's the See what it say? says. Oops. Oh, yeah, that oh, is from the good book. Yeah. So many of the volunteers and the workers in the reading room have said how they've been forced to get out of their comfort zone. And, and what is it that enables one to have the confidence to, we've had a pop-up store for instance, outside. What is it that gives you the confidence to stand there and hand out you know, the little spiritual cookies, the thoughts for today, or the leaflets, and talk to complete strangers? And I think we have to dig deep in each of ourselves and say, well, what is it that can motivate me? And, and the clearest thing is love. Love for our fellow man and having something we feel is so precious that nothing can stop us from sharing it. Um, and also seeing our fellow man uh, in the way they truly are as children of God and receptive. It's been my day. I'm being serious. Right. I'm being quite serious because you know sometimes yeah. people you don't take a, a time out just to yeah. say hello, like you know, yeah. just to interact. That daily lift. Christian it's science. Yes. Yeah. Two words I never thought to be put together. <laughs> but I've heard I've, I've, I've heard of Christian science. I've, she writes a, a book. It's a woman, isn't it? Yeah, yeah Mary Baker Eddy. Yeah. Oh, okay, because I've, yes. I've I've heard of yes. Christian science. Yes. Christian science is more about believing God and, and holding your trust in God, yeah. putting your faith into God. I think you are actually grasping to God more. Yeah. I think. ChristianScience.com, they'll tell you some more information about Thank it. Thank you very much. I think the ones that, that for me work best, um, actually supporting it, um, is in the reading room because you can go out into the areas round about and you can tell people in 10 minutes there's going to be a talk. Um, you know, on spirituality or yesterday, um, you know, um, changing limits um, and stuff like that. So I think that the closer it is to where you're actually doing it, the better. I'm particularly impressed by the amount of literature and interesting books that you've been able to put here, which I think have a really broad appeal, not just to the Christian science community, but to I mean, the titles on this literature, the variety of Bibles that I see over there, and the CDs. It's, it's really opened my eyes, even as a church member in one of the sort of provincial towns. And what I've really appreciated more than anything else is the way that um, we've been open and available to meet people who know nothing about Christian science at all. And uh, that is really special because it's, take, it's made me realise it's not, I've glimpsed this, it's not for myself, it's what I can share with others and that people are really interested. That's what I found. They don't particularly want to know whether it's this religion or that religion. What they want to know about is this, can this help me? Well, I just think that reading rooms, Mrs. Eddy, Establish reading rooms to be part of their community and w there is a whole new community which has been created in this part of London and to have this reading room which is not tied to any one church has enlivened this community and brought a wonderful sense of healing here. Well uh, I'm really impressed by everything that has been taught. Um, I learned that um, it's all about the mind you know all our approach to life should be a positive, breaking the limits of the limitations in their life and, and, and just concentrating on the good things because God has got 
good intentions about us, you know. Yeah, so, so, so I learned that, yes. I mean, this community has been through a lot, having the Olympics here, and, and to have this spiritual base here, people are really yearning it and saying, you know, we want you here past the Olympics. I think it, the whole thing has well exceeded expectations. Here we are a few days before the end of the Paralympics. We've had the Olympics, the whole atmosphere of the London, the country, and particularly Stratford has just been wonderful. We found a huge receptivity in the Stratford area. We have felt that we have been part of the activity and the success of this event. Uh, and I, the feedback that I've received, not just from the people who used it, but from the church members and others who've come to work here, has just been remarkable. They have all felt excited, thrilled. And I, I think what has happened is that many people have done more volunteering than they originally expected to do, simply because they have been able to engage with the public in a way that often just doesn't happen in day-to-day -day life in their own churches or whatever. And several people have said to me that they see this as a template for reading room activity elsewhere. You know, we talk about a legacy for the Olympics and I think we can support the idea of a legacy for the good work that's been going on down here of just bringing this sense of spirit, God, to this community. Not that they didn't have it, but they haven't had this particular expression of it in Christian science previously. I was actually working in Atlanta prior to the Olympics and um, uh, the city was so divided at that point in time that I wasn't even willing to move my family down where my job was. So I commuted a thousand miles each week leaving my family in Boston just because Atlanta seemed like such a divided city. Um, you were in one quadrant or another, um, there was no flow of, of, of people or ideas between it. And the Olympics transitioned that. Um, uh, essentially, if you went to Centennial Park today, which was where the flame was uh, 16 years later, that is now kind of the central gathering point for people of all communities. Um, uh, so whether they're of African American descent or white or of different religious groups, these 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 groups that had no interaction previously, that's now the central focus. And you think about the same opportunity existing here. A lot of work was put into the online reading. Well, I think it's fair to say that up to now, most of the focus has been on Stratford. And my feeling really now is that the focus it's not got to switch away from Stratford or anything that we may do in the future, but there's got to be more focus on the online reading room. That was originally, anyway, an important part of our legacy. We're here to tell people that uh, East Village is 2,818 flats and houses, all made to the highest eco-friendly spec. Uh, there'll be a brand new academy, which will be Chobham Academy, which is run by uh, the Harris Federation, who are one of the top federations for academies in the country, trying to create a community and neighbourhood. So it's actually going to be um, very green, very friendly, and they're aiming on trying to create a, a community which will um, be the legacy, which won't just last five or ten years, whatever, but grow, organically grow over generations. So it's taken what's effectively been a run-down, uh, contaminated area, uh, no disrespect to the area, uh, they've cleaned that all up and they've actually, um, hopefully, now regenerating an area that will be a legacy for, as I say, for at least a few generations. So I think what we can all do is just pray together about what our little bit of the legacy should be. This whole area is expecting some kind of legacy as a result of the Olympics. And seeds have been sown here, science and health has been sown, people have talked about Christian science, people have prayed together and been prayed for, and whoever knows who knows what the next steps will be but i'm sure there'll be some good that will continue to grow out of what's been planted here it's represented the whole of the uk field and i think it's fair to say even the international field to some extent we have received financial support from around the world we have had dozens of people coming here being a part of it and without exception being thoroughly excited and I think they're taking that inspiration back to their churches. And the community has a love for us. Mm. Clearly. And that's really the only reason we're seriously thinking what else can we do? Yeah. Well, I feel I've discovered a great love of uh, God here. You know, I feel a lot of people 
are really genuinely interested in spirituality. And I, I feel it's really lively and wonderful place to be. It just felt absolutely right. When one sits here, works here, engages, one kind of, if I can put it um, slightly romantically, one falls in love with the community and mm. the people in there. And you kind of feel that they're now our friends and you don't abandon friends, you maintain contact. And how is the question? It's a ministry here. Yeah. This town is growing. Yes. Yeah. I think you really need to expand your vision beyond the Olympics. But quite a few in the Stratford, they achieve a lot. They came, customers came here and they said, uh, where, where are they going? And um, it was nice, something was different here. It's a shame that, you know, you, you, you're all leaving because, you know, it's like a family to me. You know, I come here every day and to say hello. <laughs> and it's a shame that, you know, you're all leaving us. Yeah. But, yeah. Now, if you care about Stratford, Prove it. Certainly, we've all felt here, I think, that there's good soil, um, a very diverse population, a real window on the world, and people who are searching. There's a lot of seekers for truth here, um, and it is good soil, and I think that has probably made the deepest impact on us. I think we didn't plan how we would be affected by this, how Stratford and the people here would connect with us and have an impact on us um, and perhaps affect the way we go forward. You know, there are some opportunities and some challenges. At the end of the day, I think it's what does the Christian Science Movement want to do? Uh, it's got to grow out of the inspiration and the excitement. And I think that what may come out of this will be totally different from anything we might have visualised a few months ago. Well, I've seen it evolve from the beginning. And to be honest, I wouldn't have thought it was possible to have achieved what has been achieved. And I went away thinking, well, I went, came back all fired up after my visit, that if they can do this in Stratford, then it can happen in other places as well, because I really think it's a miraculous achievement what has happened. And you are so inspired by going there, there's so much energy, and you come back really fired up with all these ideas that you can use in your own reading room, in your own branch church. So that, I feel, is a big part. And I like it so much that the local people come in and they feel so attracted to it. And so many people have said, we need you here. And they do, and, but we need them as well. The impact on the local people of Stratford seems to have been adequately met. And one would like to think that that can be expanded upon and continued in some form or another. Well, I think we've touched so many people and they've touched us in the local community of Stratford. And I think as many locals have bought Science and Health, for me, the legacy is to continue supporting that. We can't leave the people where they are at this wonderfully kind of early stage of discovery of these new ideas. I think metaphysically and practically, we need to continue supporting that. I've seen for myself what I treat as a model for a reading room. It's been absolutely fascinating to me to see not only introducing new people to Christian science, but actually seeing them come back and ask for further help, further explanation. People swarmed in wondering who the heck we were and what was Christian science. And the great thing was to introduce them to Mary Baker Eddy, which was the most important thing. It was hard work, very hard work, uh, but we got through it. Uh, and we're now through to the other end and we can say hooray, it was wonderful. We're not talking to different people. 
We're not talking to people who don't know the Christ. We are bringing out what is natural to them, and it is natural for people to love God and to receive the blessing of God's love. God is not divided into ethnicity. There is only one God, and there is only God, one spiritual image and likeness of God. If that's what we have in mind, that's what we find. So we don't divide them into ethnical groups. We go where there are different languages knowing that there is only one people, the people of God, and they all are it. Well, we had such a wonderful summer here in the reading room and we met so many wonderful people and it would have just been wrong for us to drop it, finish and go. And it so easily fell into our laps that Heloisa was in the country and we could continue the torch, carry on the torch of the Olympics and what we had started. And I think we need to continue this on into the future just nurturing this community. It's such a wonderful project for us and so worthwhile. I enjoyed it and at, at the end of it I felt really healed. I felt so much peace. It was great. It was really good. So I'm really glad that I've discovered you. Some people like me, well, I can't travel very far because I've got a young baby and also I don't really like going that far out. And when you was in Stratford, I found it ideal. It would be nice for you to have some place in Stratford, because I think the Christian fellowship that you have is something that is different. That, I mean, it's not too demanding. It's just something that is um, quite open, that you could feel free to go in and have a prayer, have a word. Well, it was interesting, and there were a number of people who said they were really pleased to see us back again. And in fact, I remember one particular comment. They said, where have you lot been? Several other people just saying that they had missed the shop. And one or two people, as they passed the pop-up stand, did a sort of double take and said, oh, you guys are back again. You know, really good to have you back. And I think um, the response that's been from the people coming up to the stand has just been amazing. So if we were here for a longer period, one could imagine, you know, greater fruitage. I think it's important because the, the local people so much wanted us not to abandon them and to, to stay and, and be, be with them and remember them. So I feel that's, that's good. Handing out the, the invitations on a couple of days ago, I was, and they were so interested and they were so pleased that, to get these invitations and to know that we were doing something and not abandoning them completely. Several people that we'd known through the summer um, came and talked with us and it just seemed to be such a right thing to do. I thought it was really great and it takes you really deep into the knowledge of God. It was during the Olympics, I, I was given a flyer of all the talks you had on. Yes, I thought I'd come along and I brought my two daughters as well and we, had, we, we all enjoyed it, it was great. Yes, so I'm hoping that you'll have a, a reading room in Stratford. Well, I certainly can't outline what's going to happen for the future, but I know it will be good. None of this can be for nothing. It's been an evolving process. None of this can be for nothing. It's got to bless everybody. I think at the very least what we should be doing is to actually carry on some sort of presence there, uh, whether it's the local Christian Science churches or whether it's people like me who come from 50 miles away, but initially to get something that is more lasting, getting it going because we have started something off and to see the yearning that there is in people. You know, you only have to speak to one person there in a day to get some of the reactions that we were getting to feel it was worthwhile. But it was not one we were seeing. We were seeing tens of people each day who were looking for help and the help they were needing was instant. Have you enjoyed it? Oh, immensely. I'd, I'd do it again.